Now since every research project and for that matter every research proposal and dissertation start with a good research topic, let's spend a few minutes to speak about qualities of a good research topic as well as the process through which one identifies one um, for their dissertation. We'll start with qualities of a good research topic. There are four in total and they start with a personal interest in the study. It is very important that you feel motivated to conduct research in your chosen topic and you, it's even more important that you sustain this motivation for about six months. That's how long it takes from the moment you formulate that research topic in writing in this course to the time you submit your dissertation. Secondly, a good research topic brings a contribution to knowledge. This basically means that a strong research idea should pass the so what test. And to do so, you need to think about the potential impact of the research you're proposing. What is the benefit of answering that research question? Who will it help and how? If you cannot make a definite statement about the purpose of your research, it is unlikely that you will end up with a good research topic. So do spend enough time thinking about those issues, thinking about the contribution it brings to theory, but also to practice and to research. The third quality of a good research topic is that it is specific. To ensure the contribution of the study you'll propose is specific, this basically refers to the fact that you need to have a question that your study is trying to answer. A question rather than simply a topic heading. The question specifies what you hope to learn about the topic of interest and what your exact contribution in that area could be. Two broad and poorly formulated research questions obscure the understanding of the study's contribution. They can also send you to false paths of inquiry. It is very important that you set the boundaries of what it is that you're trying to examine. A good way to think about this is by employing what we called um, here at Glasgow, the ABC rule. Let's spend a couple of minutes trying to understand that rule. The ABC rule basically states that any good research aim has three elements to it. A and B, abstract concepts, and C, applied context. In other words, one way of thinking about it, one template through which you could express the ABC rule in your research aim is to say the aim of this research is to study the determinants of A in the context of C. Okay, so no B there. The B is implied. The B is the determinant. It's, it's what you're trying to find out. A way to express this as a question would be for example, what are the determinants of job-related tension, so an A, in public organizations, the C, the context. Another template for a correctly formulated research aim is the aim of this research is to study the consequences of A in the context of C. Again, an implied B. The B is the consequences. A way to express this as a question might be, what are the consequences of, for example, job-related tension, A, in public organizations, C. A third template through which you could express your research aim might be, the aim of this research is to study the relationship or the link between A and B in the context of C. A way to express this as a question might be what is the relationship or the link between, for example, job characteristics and job related tension in public organizations? A. Job characteristics. B. Job related tension. C. Public organizations. A fourth template for your research aim might be the aim of this research is to study the effect or the impact 
of A on B in the context of C. Or, expressed as a question, what is the effect, impact of job-related tension, as an example, on performance, another example, in public organizations? A, job-related tension, B, performance, C, public organizations. Finally, another template might be the aim of this research is to enhance the understanding of A in the context of C. Or, how does job-related tension affect people working in public organizations? Now, you may have noticed that job-related tension is an abstract concept. You cannot actually see it. You cannot imagine it. Performance is another abstract concept. You could see performance in, for example, number of hours worked, but this could be one indicator of many for performance. Performance as a term is a concept, an abstract concept. Therefore, could be A or B. It cannot be a C. C is a practical context, which in this example is depicted by public organizations. Other contexts could be the banking industry, the manufacturing industry, the hospitality industry in India. There is a plethora of contexts um, and choose one you're interested in. So we said that the third essential quality of a good research topic is that that topic is specific, is that it entails a specific research question. The fourth one is that that research question, that research aim is feasible and it leads to a feasible research design. This is because you need to be realistic about the scope and scale of your project. The question you ask must be within your ability to tackle. For example, are you able to access the kind of data you need to answer your question fully? Are you able, do you have the skills to undertake the data analysis that you require? Can you do the project within the limited time and resources available to you? Sometimes a research question may appear feasible, but when you start doing field work or when you start looking at the data, it appears like too much to be handled. Well, then at that point, you will need to take some decisions, some amendments and develop a contingency plan with your supervisor anticipating any further problems and tackling any existing ones. Now, the process of identifying a research topic, a research topic with all those four qualities about it, that the subject is interesting, that the research questions are specific, that they are important and bring a contribution to the existing body of knowledge, and that the project they entail can be carried out within the existing skills, time and resources available to you. This process is a reiterative one. It starts with establishing the area. It goes then into narrowing down that area into specific research questions and then moves on into establishing a justification for the importance, the usefulness of answering those questions. If you, in that step three of the process, realize that you cannot make a narrative, a convincing narrative, to say that those research questions are important, you go back to formulating other research questions. If you, however, realize that you can justify their importance, you move on to assessing the feasibility of the project overall. And again, if you find out that that's not feasible, you go back and formulate different questions. And if you do find out it is feasible and hopefully you would be able to with some help from your um, research methods class and your dissertation supervisor, then you move on to research design. Now, what I would like to do uh, at the end of this video is spend a couple more minutes looking at sources that will help you identify an interesting research topic. 
One obvious source is your personal experience and your personal interests. We all have them and we are intrinsically motivated to pursue them. So look at those first. You could look at problems faced by organizations in practice. How might you find out about them from the news, for example? From the academic literature, there are often interesting examples being given there or interesting case studies that may well appeal to you too. You could also find interesting ideas from your uh, lecture slides. We offer examples uh, on our lecture slides to illustrate theory and um, some of those examples may well appeal to you. Discussions with more experienced researchers in the area and finally, other students' research projects. You don't need to worry about copying another existing um, research project. It is about just looking at the, the research topic. Now, this diagram depicts, in short, um, the things we've been talking about and the things covered uh, in terms of sources of ideas and topics for your research. And hopefully you'll find this useful to start thinking seriously about what it is that can sustain your interest for a number of months and um, what research questions and research aim you can derive from that general first idea.